Hey, John. Hey, Pat. Hey, listen, before you say anything, uh, we're going to get the Ellen Craswell bit on the show tonight, okay? I guarantee it'll run tonight. I just spaced it the last couple of shows. I'm sorry. It's okay. Anyway, you know, the good thing is I had a chance to work on the script a little more. Yeah? Kind of punched it up, and I think it's better. See what you think. Uh, well, gee, Pat. I mean, you're really getting into this, aren't you? What's that supposed to mean? No, nothing, nothing. No, it doesn't mean anything. No. Uh, listen, I'll see you out there, okay? We'll get the show. We'll get it, we'll get it on tonight's show, okay? Nothing. Okay. What's that supposed to mean? Gee, you, Pat, you're sure getting into it. What the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Very happy, very excited crowd here, you know. They're hometown fans, but let's face it, our, the team, the Huskies, they didn't do too well today. Did you guys see that? They didn't. The loss, you have to see if you're watching the game against Notre Dame, the loss was especially painful because if you watched it, they got a lot of do-overs. Like, it was almost like, you know, street ball. There. Oh, hit the bar, do-over, hit the bar, and then <laughs> towards the half, Notre Dame, they just started shoveling. Here, fumbling, they were shoveling the ball to the Huskies. <laughs> Kind of like, you know, you play with your older brother. Here, go ahead, try it again, try it again. <laughs> try it again, try it again. I just still couldn't quite make it. But anyway, just couldn't quite do it. But any, speaking of the Huskies, there was an interesting story in the news. Uh, this week, apparently, marks the 15th anniversary of the wave. And, uh, yeah, ooh. Yeah, they started it here. It's just like this thing. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of people claiming that they invented it, and I think it's sad that there, there's always this controversy. Ah, it was my idea. My, it's like, you know, this controversy, but it's even sadder that there are people out there trying to take credit for inventing the wave. <laughs> God, and it's, I think it's particularly tragic for their family members. Yes, dear, yes, you, you know. I was in my idea. Yes, you invented the wave. Yes, fine. <laughs> Settle down now. Oh, God, he started it again. You know, they, uh, take your medicine. Anyway, the big uh, computer news this week, after going back to the drawing board, Microsoft reintroduced the Microsoft Network. It's totally different. It's going to be more like television, only the shows are going to be on the computer so they can be interactive. Well, you see, I've got news for them. There already is an interactive show on television. It's called Baywatch. I mean, it's just a lot of people have figured out how to be interactive with Baywatch. And I know a few of you out there are interactive with this show, too, and I want you to keep those letters coming. Anyway, uh, they're going to have lots of exciting shows on the Microsoft Network. Right now, they've got a lot of time to fill, so when you click on the network, you might see a rerun. Like, click on the network. Liz, what do they have now? Well, they've got to admit that it's even on both sides. <laughs> I love Lucy. We're going to trim that. Well, why can't we trim it with those branches I just cut off? Yeah, it looks a lot better on the computer, doesn't it? You know? <laughs> See, we didn't know what we were missing all these years. It's the future. Anyway, the good folks at Microsoft have announced uh, some of their fall lineup, and we thought you might be interested. For example, the one hour of downloading pictures of my dog show. <laughs> this old, insanely large house. The interacting with other bored people who don't date much show. <laughs> Country-style online dancing. And a movie channel with features like Das Boot, <laughs> The 3.1 Stooges, and finally, Revenge of the Nerds, The Director's Cut. <laughs> Obviously, people here are excited. 
Those are just some of the shows to look forward to. Actually, the Microsoft Network, it does have one bona fide hit already. Millions of people visit this show every day. It's called Beavis and Butthead and Bill. I think we have a clip of that, don't we? <laughs> 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 Beavis, Beavis and Butthead and Bill. Of course, uh, yeah, oh, we like that show. That's good, yeah. All right. Of course, in the other networks, the big fad is shows about the paranormal, you know, and science fiction and suspense. And finally, we have a local version. Take a look. There it is. It looks like graffiti of some sort. It's some sort of slogan or slang, Scully. It's particular to this area of the country. And who do you think is responsible for it? No life form we're familiar with. What's going on here, Mulder? Take a look at this, Scully. <laughs> Suicide, accident, or homicide? No, he's just napping. There's another one of those slogans pasted on the car. It's the 15th car I found like this today. Up on the curb, seatbelt hanging out. <laughs> one of these things hanging from the rear view mirror. <laughs> Half-eaten container of Lutfisk. Not only that. Every one of these guys was a Scandinavian. <laughs> I don't get it. There's something strange about this place. Where were you? I was pulled over for exceeding five miles per hour within the city limits. Hey, listen to this, Walter. Okay, we'll meet you there in 10. Mulder, you ready to go? Sure, sure, you betcha. All right, we've got a great show. We'll be right back, so stay with us. Age. It's sad. It's bleak. It's depressing. Need a lift? Then come on down to Bob's Plastic Surgery Barn. Hi, I'm Bob. At Bob's Plastic Surgery Barn, the knives are always sharp, 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 and the prices are low, low, low. How low? So low, it's scary. But not as scary as this guy. Yes, you'll save on nose jobs wrinkle work, and implants, implants, implants. And at Bob, we're precise. From a tiny tuck to total reconstruction, if you're not satisfied, you don't pay. What's at Bob? We're fast. We'll do you in under an hour, guaranteed. So come visit Bob's Plastic Surgery Barn today. That's Bob's Plastic Surgery Barn. We like to experiment, and it shows. <laughs> right now, take advantage of Bob's It's Fall special offer. With every facelift, get a chin extension absolutely free. <laughs> now that's a deal. Bob's Plastic Surgery Barn, located in Bellevue and in Bellevue. Uh, do you, uh, do you know where my New Yorker magazine is? Will you move? What? 
How do I know where you left your stupid magazine? You hid it, didn't you? Oh, yeah, now why would I hide your New Yorker? Because there is something in there that you do not want me to see. Okay, I hid it. And I'm gonna tell you why I hid it. Because I know that there's an article that you wanted to read that postulates that the universe is 12 to 14 billion years old when you know good and well that the universe is only 8 to 10 billion years old. Oh, you ignorant cow. <laughs> that is based on data that underestimates the mass and energy of the entire universe's rate of expansion, and you know it. You are such a liar. <sighs> you know you want, you want to know why you are screwed up? I'm going to tell you. It's because you keep figuring the... Hubble constant at 56, when you know good and well it's over 70. I do not know anything of the sort, you oh. witch. <laughs> Why don't you just get up off of your lazy pre-Copernican butt sometime and look up the truth? Oh, the truth? Well, look who's talking about the truth. Oh, you quark-challenged mutant. Will, will you listen to yourself, woman? Are you seriously saying that at the time of the Big Bang, the universe was almost completely empty? Because if that is what you are saying, then the only thing around here that is almost completely empty is your head. Well, all right, you just show me a valid equation that factors in the mass and the energy you would need to prove your theory, and I will chug a Schlitz. Oh. <laughs> Hell, woman, you'll chug a Schlitz at the drop of a Parsec. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look who is talking, the beer keg with legs. <laughs> My mother was right. You are just too stupid to understand applied physics. Applied physics, my ass. Oh, now that was well put, because it would take applied physics to measure your ass's mass. <laughs> really? Really. Well, now, is that your rear end, or did you just discover a new supernova? You shut up. And you shut up, too, Socrates! Even that stupid dog in this would know that I'm right just based on Einstein's cosmological constant. Oh, cosmological constant, cosmological constant. <laughs> the only cosmological constant I know is your face. And if it's anything that ugly, I don't want anything to do with it. Oh, go to hell. You go to hell. Well, I would, but according to your theory, there ain't enough mass in the universe to make a hell. <laughs> Come in! What the hell is going on here? I told the boys I'd go down to the bar and we'd read some Henry James together. Hey, fellas. Hi. Oh, no, you don't. You were out all night last night. You were checking on those local variations of the, of the Hubble constant, and, and I am damned if you are going to go out tonight and read Portrait of a Lady with These Losers while I sit here home all alone! Damn you, woman! Just for once, can't I go out and enjoy myself without you riding on me? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm sorry, boys. It's going to have to be another time. All right. You know good and well that this is our TV night together. I know. All right, I'm sorry if I snapped at you. Sometimes you talk crazy talk. Well, I'm sorry, too. Okay, let's just forget about it and watch Nova. Nova? I do not want to watch that stupid show. We are supposed to watch Biography. You know they're doing Balzac tonight. Oh, why don't you go stick your balls at where the sun don't shine? Well, why don't you shut that black hole of mouth and get me a beer? Good evening. This is The Late Report. Well, Governor Mike Lowry held his 15th annual shrimp feed last Sunday at Discovery Park. Attendance was down a bit, partly because Lowry is not running for re-election, and also because of confusion resulting from the Detlef shrimp feed going on across town. <laughs> Male nudity in the Intamon's production of Love, Valor, Compassion has drawn only six complaints, and Intamon points out that five of these were from elderly women who were hoping for seats closer to the stage. <laughs> 
The Seattle Sounders beat Rochester 2-0 for their second straight A-League soccer championship. A jubilant Seattle responded to the win by saying, We have a soccer team? <laughs> Florence, Italy is using posters with illustrations of the monorail and the space needle to advocate their vision of the city of the future. Florence officials say their vision is a future in which people travel a mile on an elevated subway to eat expensive meals while they spin around in circles. <laughs> Christian Geisman, a 15-year-old Shorecrest High School sophomore, has been helping Metro plan better bus routes around Seattle. Following Geisman's advice, Metro just announced the new number 75 express bus from Christian Geisman's house to Tower Records. <laughs> During her debate in downtown Seattle earlier this week with Gary Locke, Paul's Bowes Ellen Craswell said that she thinks the state's criminal justice system should be based on the Ten Commandments. Then Craswell left the room, parted Elliott Bay, and walked home. <laughs> although, although QFC will soon be taking over Wallingford's famous food giant store, a group of residents are begging QFC to save the big food giant sign. QFC isn't saying what it will do, but word is that Costco wants to buy the sign and rearrange it. <laughs> An animal rights group calling itself the Animal Liberation Front has engaged in a graffiti campaign, spray, uh, spraying phrases such as, meat is murder, on fast food restaurant windows. Here with a few thoughts is Joel McHale. Joel? Thank you, John. You know, I don't want to be disrespectful to the Animal Liberation Front. I mean, I like animals as much as the next person. But there's more life on this planet than just animals. I'm talking about our silent green friends, the plants. <laughs> Half of all life on Earth is plant life. But I don't hear any protesters shouting over the fate of celery. Nobody's screaming out, mushrooms are murder, <laughs> or kale is killing. Or hummus is homicide. Okay, great. Eggplant right, is Joel, extermination we, yeah, yeah, we and cilantro yeah, yeah, is Joel, slaughter. Joel, we get the point. Okay, we get the point. Jeez. Think about it, John. Does an ear of corn not feel pain when it's brutally ripped from its stock? Uh, I don't, no, I don't think so. And who cries for the carrots, John? Uh, loonies. <laughs> How do you sleep at night? Uh, the spoon, spoon style, spoon style. All right, well, I've written a song of oh, protest no, for our little haven't. leafy friends. Oh Here to God. accompany me, uh, since I can't play the guitar, oh, is Bob Nelson. Oh, Bob's involved, that's great. <laughs> Everybody's talking about radishes, garnishes, cabbages and oranges, nectarines, collard greens, tangerines and butterbeans, toss greens, toss greens. All we are saying is give peas a chance. That's great, y'all. All we are saying what? is give peas a chance. That's great, y'all. That's a wonderful song. Okay. Second verse. Oh, God. Everybody's talking about turnips and parsnips and carrot sticks and onion dip. Hominy, lychee, parsley and broccoli. Zucchini, zucchini. All we are saying, everybody, is give peas a chance. Come on. All we are saying is give peas a chance. Okay, I think the message of the show here so far is if you love vegetables, you can eat them. Just don't, don't cut them very hard. Don't do that. And if you'd like to come down here, obviously it's audience particip participation night, and we'd like to include that. So if you want tickets, call that number. We'll come down here. We'll sing songs. We'll come to your house. It's a, it's a lovely, peaceful gathering. We'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs>
Steve. How did it look? Look good, John. Really, right. really good. So. Great. I'll see you in the office, okay. man. All right. Hey, John. Oh. The show's not over, is it? Pat, gosh, the Craswell bit, and you rewrote it and everything. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, for sure, we'll get it on next week. For sure. Okay. You promise? Oh, yeah. No problem, buddy.